In this episode, join us as we sail the Liza Lou from Isla Mujeres to Panama on Second Thought, the Caymans. The weather router warned us that the first part of this passage was going to involve motoring directly into wind and waves to get far enough east before we could make our turn south towards Panama. So we just arrived in Puerto Isla Mujeres. Jordan had packed my bag with a bunch of boating equipment and um, I pushed the button to go through uh, security, you know, the immigration and customs and it went red and they searched my bags and I had to produce a bunch of paperwork and explain what everything was and it was fine. We got in late so we had to pay a little extra money for this customs guy to ride his scooter over from wherever he was and stamp our passports so we could leave in the morning. We're off to go food shopping, provisioning for six days at sea. Seven. Seven. Of course you have to correct me. Well, I mean... Yeah. This is Ched Drowie, Isla Mujeres Mega Supermarket where we did all our provisioning. We couldn't believe how well stocked the aisles were. Everything we could have wanted and more was here. Here's my mom peddling all the groceries to the boat. It looks like we have a ton of food. I got here on Thursday. Um, the boat was in great shape. The swim platform won't come down cylinders is seized up but uh, otherwise the boat was in dirty but in great shape um, they took good care of it the service was done already when I arrived and um, you know so hot in the yard no wind and it was just brutally hot 6 30 a.m. and we're leaving Isla Mujeres now and navigating out of that channel on our way to Panama, seven days at sea at, l at least, I guess. Here's Jordan rigging up our invaluable sunshade. It's, it's about noon time now and we are heading straight into the wind. And the seas are pretty choppy, but there's a nice breeze coming through, so it feels pretty good, and the sun shades awesome. We always fish while we're on passage, but many of them are far too big to keep, so a lot of them end up being let go. I'm in the middle of my night watch and this is the first overnight on the way to Panama. It's pretty nice out. It's warm, a little bit of rain and I can see lightning in the horizon which is a little disconcerting. I'm doing okay. Jordan and I decided to change our night watch schedule so I'm doing the 12 to 4. And I think I like it a lot better because then it's just one, one watch as opposed to two. My next watch won't be till eight and then the day is new and there's something nice about that. So I think I want to keep this sketch. Eli, how does, how does time seem to move on the boat compared to on land? It feels like time on the boat moves faster because I am more thinking about like fish and fishing and about the boat rather than the time. Hey people. So I just wanted to do a little monologue here. Um, we are in the middle of uh, the ocean. End of day two on the way to Panama. 
We are so far from any landform, a couple days from the Caymans, a couple days from Mexico. We're just like in the blue. Um, and I just wouldn't want anybody to think that I'm like, woohoo, this is easy. This is woohoo, you know, not feeling that. Um, tremendous amount of solitude out here. And I was reading the other day in a really great book um, about the difference between loneliness and solitude. And loneliness is like this fearful, oh, poor me, I'm all by myself kind of feeling. And solitude is more like enjoying one's own company. And so I'm feeling much more of that right now. Um, but it's only day two and um, I feel like so much responsibility for Eli who is 11 and um, keeping him fed and unsunburned and not dehydrated and safe you know and then not hovering and being too like uh, freaked out about everything he does um, and then Jordan, you know, he is our El Capitan, and God forbid anything should happen to him because we really rely on him for so much. And, you know, I know that we would figure it out, you know, we're, we're going to figure out whatever's to come, but it is extremely scary. And just trying to like keep the fear and the healthy respect and, you know, mitigate the anxiety and just enjoy being out here discovering um, you know a part of myself that I just never never have paid much attention to um, so that's where I'm at end of day two on the way to Panama perfect size Dorado Eli Better than that monster we caught last night. Like I said before, a lot of the fish we catch are way too big to keep. But once in a while, you get one that's the perfect size. And boy, do they like to flop around and get the deck bloody, which makes a lot of cleanup for us. But before too long, we're filleting them and putting them on the grill. So last night we hooked up with a huge monster Dorado and um, it was way too big to keep. We couldn't even fit it in our fridge. So we had to let it go. And today we caught a nice female Dorado that was the perfect size. We're probably gonna be able to have enough for tonight's dinner and a little bit tomorrow for breakfast or lunch. So this is our Dorado on our grill. Yummy, yummy. This is what your child looks like on Dramamine. So it's the beginning of day three. It's been pretty uncomfortable. We've been beating into the wind, motoring right into it, the wind and swell for three days to try to get the Grand Cayman before we turn south to Panama. It's what Chris Parker wanted us to do. It's not what I thought we would do, but the winds have not been favorable. And now we're running out of fuel because I didn't estimate the usage to be as high. I had 90 some gallons of fuel on the boat, but, um, we're eating it up. Still got half a tank left. 30 gallon fuel bladder still below in the Lazarette. But we're gonna try to get into Grand Cayman at uh, Harbor House Marina to top off. And that way we'll be able to blast down motor sailing, pick up, make up some time that we lost by going the longer distance and having to stop to get fuel. It's about 2.30 p.m. on our way to Grand Cayman to go get some gas. We had a messy time trying to siphon gas from our big reserve fuel bladder into gas cans and then into the tank. 
and everybody got soaked in diesel fuel and it was just disgusting and we washed every everybody washed off with soap and water but Jordan's been below deck sleeping for quite a while and um, I'm just reading and spending that time in solitude. He just got uh, our updated weather from Chris Parker and it's looking like Saturday is going to be just like shit weather, terrible weather. Um, and so we are making a decision to um, to pull into uh, Caymans and just pull the boat out for a couple weeks and um, wait for that next weather window where we could do a rum line straight to Panama. So it's sort of with a heavy heart, but we also need to learn to respect the weather gods and you know, we are inconsequential to them, so we have to be on their schedule. And it seems like this is the safest thing to do. Any words, Jordan? No, nope, just so I don't want my hair cut off. So despite our initial intentions, this trip took a slightly different tack. And at our first available weather window, we will bring the Liza Lou the remaining four and a half days, hopefully on a beam reach, smooth sailing to Panama, where she will stay till we leave for our Pacific crossing at the end of December 2018.